Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing primes and irreducibles. So in the previous video we saw the definitions of an irreducible element and a prime element within a general non-zero commutative ring. What we're now going to do is see how these definitions interlink in special types of non-zero commutative rings. So firstly what we're going to do is look at integral domains, and in an integral domain it's going to be the case that all prime elements are irreducible elements. Okay, but you can't prove it the other way around. You can't prove that all irreducible elements are prime elements. For that, we will have to go one step higher. We'll have to go up to a principal ideal domain, and in a principal ideal domain, it will be possible to say that not only are all prime elements irreducible elements, but also the other way around, all irreducible elements are prime elements, so the two definitions are truly interchangeable and can be used interchangeably. And indeed, the integers is an example of a principal ideal domain, and therefore you can use the terms uh, irreducible and prime interchangeably in the, the ring of integers, uh, and indeed we often use as the definition of a prime number in the integers the definition of an irreducible element rather than the definition of a prime element, although as we're about to show, they are equivalent in that specific example. Okay, right. So let's now go up um, and work with an integral domain then. So the first thing to prove is that if R is now an integral domain, so its stature is being elevated up, so it's not only just a non-zero commutative ring anymore, it's also a non-zero commutative ring with the property that if you multiply together two non-zero elements, you do not get zero back again, you get another non-zero uh, element. Okay, so uh, we've now got an integral domain, and what we want to show is that if you are a prime element, okay, then you are also an irreducible element, okay? So we want to show that all primes are irreducibles, okay? So to draw a picture, if this is the set of all irreducible elements, then we want to show that the set of prime elements is contained within that. All prime elements are irreducible elements. However, as I say, in an integral domain, we won't be able to prove that all irreducible elements are prime elements. We won't be able to prove that these two are utterly equivalent. I.e. there will still be irreducible elements, uh, potentially, that are not prime elements. Okay, so let's prove this theorem then. Uh, so, how are we going to prove this? Well, we're going to start off by taking a prime element. Okay, and remember, a prime element is not equal to the additive identity, and it's an element uh, which, if you generate its principal ideal, is a prime ideal. Okay, and we want to prove that it's an irreducible element. Okay, so we want to prove that if we have two things multiplying to give p, so okay, let's take, say p is our prime element, we want to now prove that it's irreducible, so let's suppose that we have a product of two elements here from our uh, integral domain here, which are multiplying together to give the prime p. What I now want to prove is that one of these has to be a unit. Okay, so what I can now do is use the fact that p is a prime. Now, the fact that p is a prime tells me that its principal ideal is a prime ideal, and that tells me that if I have two elements multiplying together to give an element of that ideal, that one or both of them have to be within the ideal. So what I'm saying is, look, here p, p is most definitely an element of the principal ideal generated by p, um, which we are assuming is a prime ideal. So I have got two things multiplying together here to give me an element within this prime ideal here. Okay, so what I can now conclude is that at least one of these has to be within this prime ideal, this principal ideal generated by p. Okay, so let's say arbitrarily that it's a. Okay, without loss of generality, I can say, okay, let a be the one uh, that uh, is actually contained uh, within the principal ideal generated by p. Of course, b could be as well, but let's say that a absolutely is contained within the principal ideal generated by p. There's always going to be one of them that has to be, and we've picked one of them. Okay? So A is going to be an element of the principal ideal generated by P, but what does that mean? And this is why this argument is so simple. What does that now mean? If A is in the principal ideal generated by P, then it's just going to be some multiple of P. So I can write A now as, let's say, just R times P, where R is some element of the integral domain, capital R. Okay, but now I can substitute in for A here, R times P, so I then get that P 
is equal to, and I'll just apply the fact that we're working in a commutative ring here, to swap it around to P times R times B. Okay, and now we use the fact that we're working in an integral domain, and this is why we needed it to be an integral domain. We can now apply the cancellation law here, because P is not zero, so you can quite happily cancel those two things in an integral domain, and you'll get now that 1 is equal to R times B. Okay, so R times B is equal to 1. And what does that now tell you about B? It tells you that it's a unit because uh, it's multiplying by some other element to give the multiplicative identity. Okay, so it had to be a unit. It had to have a multiplicative inverse, namely this element R here. Okay, so I have now proven that one of these elements in this product that gave the uh, prime P uh, is in fact a unit, and therefore it satisfies the definition of irreducible. Okay, so my argument is perfectly valid. Okay, I just said, okay, let P be written as this product of two elements within my integral domain, and from that, uh, using the fact that P was a prime number, I have managed to show that one of them has to be a uh, unit uh, in the ring. Okay, so that's how you can prove then that all primes in an integral domain are irreducible elements. Okay, so now let's step up again. Now let's say that R is even more special. So R is now going to be a principal ideal domain. Okay, so R is a PID here. Now, of course, a principal ideal domain is an integral domain. That's part of the definition. It's an integral domain in which all of the ideals are principal ideals. There are no ideals that are not generated by a single element. Okay, and in a principal ideal domain, we can now prove the other way around. So, of course, because it's an integral domain, we know that all primes are irreducible in a principal ideal domain, but now we can also prove the other way around. All irreducibles are prime. Okay, so we're going to prove that irreducibles are prime, and therefore, in terms of this picture here, the two would be absolutely the same set. You'd get rid of all this orange bit, and it would just be one set. The set of irreducibles is exactly the same as the set of primes. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Well, let's say that we take an irreducible element. So let's say R here is going to be our irreducible element in our uh, principal ideal domain, capital R now. Okay, so R is irreducible. What we're going to show is that, what, well, what we need to show is that this is a prime uh, element, that this, that if we generate the principal ideal generated by this, we get a prime ideal. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to show that the high principal ideal generated by R, if it's irreducible and it's in a principal ideal domain, is maximal. Okay, so rather than showing that it's prime, we're going to show a stronger condition. We're going to show that it's maximal. And then we're going to use the fact that all maximal ideals in an arbitrary non-zero commutative ring are prime ideals. That's something we prove in the video on prime ideals. Okay, uh, briefly you can prove it because when you quotient a commutative ring out by a maximal ideal, you get a field. And we know that a field is always an integral domain. And whenever you quotient a commutative ring out by an ideal and get an integral domain, we know that that implies the ideal is a prime ideal. So because when you quotient out by maximum ideal, you get a field even better, that's certainly an integral domain, uh, so we can therefore conclude that that maximum ideal must have been a prime ideal. Uh, we go over that in much more detail in the video on prime ideals, but that's briefly why uh, where a maximum ideal is always a prime ideal in an arbitrary commutative ring, okay, a non-zero commutative ring, a maximum ideal is a prime ideal. Okay, so if we can show that the principal ideal generated by an irreducible element in the principal ideal domain is a maximal ideal, job's done, basically. It's instantly a prime ideal, and therefore this element is going to be a prime element. Okay, and that's not actually that difficult to prove, so let's set to it. Uh, so this is utterly going to rely on the fact that we're working in a principal ideal domain, and therefore all ideals are generated by some element. Okay, so we now need to show that this principal ideal uh, generated by R is a maximal ideal. And remember, what does that mean? It means that it's maximal with respect to proper ideals. There is no proper ideal that properly contains uh, this ideal here, okay, in the uh, principal ideal domain, capital R. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Well, what we're going to do is suppose that we do indeed have an ideal that is in between uh, the principal ideal generated by R and the principal ideal 
generated by one, the unit ideal, the entire ring. Okay, now because we're working in a principal ideal domain, this ideal will be generated by some element. Let's call that little m. Okay, and that's absolutely key that this ideal in between them is going to have to be a principal ideal. Okay, the entire argument falls down if uh, we can't say that this ideal is necessarily a principal ideal. Okay, because we're working the principal ideal domain, all the ideals are incredibly simple, and we can now uh, say that that ideal, if it exists, will be uh, a principal ideal generated by something. Now, note I am not assuming at the moment that it's properly contained. Non neither of these are proper containment. Okay, it's not necessarily properly contained within the ring. It might be the entire ring. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily properly contain uh, the principal ideal generated by R. It could be equal to it. Okay, what I want to show is that if I have such an ideal in between these two, then it's not properly in between the two. Either it's equal to this one, or it's equal to this one. Okay, so I want to prove that if I start with this assumption that I have some ideal that's in between these two, I can prove that it's either equal to this one or it's equal to this one. It is not properly in between the two, and that's exactly what it means for this ideal here to be uh, a maximal ideal. It means that it's a proper ideal that has no larger proper ideal uh, that contains it. Okay, right. Uh, so, how are we going to prove this? Uh, so, we, we all we have is that this element is irreducible. Okay, now, if the um, if we'll start off with the fact that if the principal ideal generated by R is contained within the principal ideal generated by M, then that means that our irreducible element R is contained within the principal ideal generated by M. That's perfectly reasonable. Okay, because if this, this entire ideal is, gen is contained in there, then because R is an element of this ideal, it will be contained within the principal ideal generated by M. But what does that now mean? It means that I can write this irreducible element in my principal ideal domain as some element of the uh, ring, which we'll call S, times M. So S is just some element of my principal ideal domain, capital R here. Okay, so that I can instantly conclude from the fact that this ideal uh, was principal and also that it was in between these two. Okay, right, but now I use the fact that R is irreducible. So the fact that R is irreducible tells me that one of these has to be a unit. Okay, remember, if it's irreducible, it means that any product that gives that element has to contain a unit. Okay, one of the elements has to be a unit. So we have two options here. Either M is a unit, okay, now if M is a unit, then the principal ideal generated by M will be the entire ring, okay, because if M is a unit, then it will have a multiplicative inverse, okay, let's call it 1 over M, and then when I generate the principal ideal generated by M, I will end up multiplying 1 over M by M to find an element that's going to be in here, and of course I will get 1. So I can therefore conclude that 1 will have to be in the principal ideal generated by M. And that's not good news. Okay, well, it is good news for us proving this. Uh, but um, it makes this ideal rather boring, because then the instant you get 1 in an ideal, you get everything in the ideal, because an ideal has to be closed under multiplication. So it now means that all multiples of 1 have to be in the uh, ideal, and that means that all elements of the ring have to be in there. So if M is the unit in this multiplication here, uh, then it means that your principal ideal generated by M is the entire ring. Okay, so it now implies this one here. Okay, and now there's option two, and option two is going to imply the exact opposite one. Okay, so now there's option two that S is the unit. So M is not the unit, but instead S is the unit. Okay, but what does that now mean? If S is a unit, it's going to have a multiplicative inverse. So we can multiply both sides of this equation by that multiplicative inverse, and look what we get. 1 over S times R is equal to M. Okay, so just multiplying both sides here by the multiplicative inverse of S gives me that. Now, what can I conclude from that? That M is an element of the principal ideal generated by R. Okay, uh, so 
because I've just taken some element of my ring here and multiplied it by R, that's going to be an element of my principal ideal generated by R, so M is going to be in my principal ideal generated by R, but now that implies that the entire principal ideal generated by M is going to be contained within the principal ideal generated by R, because of course ideals have to be closed under multiplication, so the instant M is in the principal ideal generated by R, all multiples of M have to also be in there, so that shows me that the entire principal ideal generated by M has to be contained within the principal ideal generated by R. Taking this statement and this statement together, if M is con the principal ideal generated by M is contained within the principal ideal generated by R, and the principal ideal generated by R is contained within the principal ideal generated by M, then they're exactly equal to one another. Okay, so this implies that the principal ideal generated by M is equal to the principal ideal generated by R. Okay, so the only two options are for this principal ideal generated by M to either equal this one below or this one above, okay, i.e. there can be no proper ideal that is properly containing uh, the principal ideal generated by R, hence uh, it is a maximal ideal. So, um, this argument completely relied on us working in the principal ideal domain note. Okay, so in the principal ideal domain, we can conclude that the principal ideal generated by an irreducible element is a maximal ideal. And now we know in an arbitrary uh, commutative ring that uh, maximal ideals are prime ideals, so that now means that the principal ideal generated by R is going to be a prime ideal, and therefore this R is going to be a prime, so R is a prime. Okay, so if you're working in a principal ideal domain, irreducible elements are prime elements, and because a principal ideal domain is an integral domain, we know that also that prime elements are irreducible elements, so they're completely and utterly equivalent. And that's why we can use the two definitions interchangeably uh, in a principal ideal domain, such as the integers, and with, that's why uh, it has been okay for you to use uh, the definition of an irreducible element as the definition of a prime element uh, in the ring of integers, because of course the ring of integers is a principal ideal domain. Okay, and with that we will end this uh, introductory discussion on primes and irreducibles.